government officials insist that this is an isolated incident. Yeah. Bet you're wondering where I've been. Where you people been? Oh, I'm still here. It's still here. Need another mirror. Hi. <laughs> Haven't seen you on this boat in a while. Don't drop it, stupid. Oh, hello. We need to have a talk, you and I. There are a lot of reasons why I haven't been able to get down here and work on this thing. 90% of the problems are out of my control. 10% is due to my own neglect. The next step we've wanted to take for a long time is get the boat out in the water so I can dry it in. The water level's been low. It makes it very difficult because you run a trailer up and down this ramp. You don't pull it out with a hoist or a crane or anything. So the ramp is only so long. So if you were to walk out in the water right now 10, 15 feet, with the water being this low, you'd come to the end of the concrete. End of the concrete means you get into mud. So if you take a tractor trailer with a big long boat trailer on the back of it made for pulling massive boats like this, when those back two wheels come off the end of the concrete, they're in the mud and sand, right? And then you pull 40,000 pounds of boat, or we're much less than 40,000 pounds of boat now, but uh, you pull that out of the water onto that trailer, those back two tires go into the mud, and now you're not getting the trailer or your boat out of the water, if that makes any sense. I've been given the word that it's possible this week the boat will be pulled out of the water, but again, sometimes things out of your control. But I'm ready to get it pulled out. I've been ready to get it pulled out. That's how I get this. In I'm not gonna do all this interior work and put wood in and all this kind of stuff if I still got things that are leaking. The plan was to take everything apart on the outside. We got 90% of that taken apart on the outside, but the rest of this boat, you need it out of the water so we can take the rail off, the stainless steel. It's cold outside, but see that stainless steel rail out there? That's gonna come off and the whole thing is gonna be, you know, laid on the ground all in one piece. I don't wanna cut it like a lot of people do when they take the rails off. It's gonna be put on the ground and then all the holes all the way around are getting drilled out, filled with epoxy. And then we're going to reset that railing in the same spots, but drilling into epoxy. Butyl tape and all that stuff, right? We've got to talk about a few things. This entire thing right here that the queen bed size uh, mattress used to sit on, it's too high for me to put four bunks in here successfully. That whole box has got to get it cut out, okay? But I am aware of the fact that I've already reduced the amount of interior bracing in this boat significantly by removing this wall, which was, you know, that's holy crap, right? But this... If I cut it down now, I will have to put something back immediately to brace it up so the whole shape doesn't change when it goes on blocks, right? And it's got to be a solid structure with bunk beds built into it. So basically epoxy framework to the sides of the boat, making all the struts and everything rock solid and tight and uh, epoxied in so that the framework of the bunk bed, there's going to be three or two uh, good tables in between each of the bunks. The bottom bunk will be able to be one giant bed with an insert added to it. We should be able to sleep four up here, no problem, and then another two in here. Suffice to say, this stuff has got to go. It's got to go. It's got to get out of here. That thing, irrelevant. It's not going to be any part of the cooling system that's going in this boat, so it's getting out of here. Water pump fed, marine type air conditioners in the boat, they're going as well. They're the originals from 1980, and so I don't, <coughs> I don't want to reuse them. I don't want to rely on them. It's time for them to go. We are doing a full refit here and building an adventure machine. We're going to need to be able to take it off grid for two or three days. Traditional marine style of air conditioner requires generator power to run it. Like I'm thinking mini splits because I'm in a freshwater environment, and they use a lot less electricity. I could probably get one of them to run off a big ass battery bank in the back with an inverter. I think that might be part of the plan there. I, I pretty well get that figured out. Mini splits are simple, you can install them yourself. And out here, for what I'm doing, it's gonna be undercover. I'll show you how I'm gonna mount uh, the exterior units. It's all gotta go. All of it got to go. Nothing has changed on the big boat. Everything's pretty much still the same here. Still waiting for them to pull this thing out of the water. But apparently, they're supposed to be working on it, but. Well, 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 what do we have here? Look at this, it is out of the water. <laughs> yes! Ooh, we got a lot of issues. <laughs> we got problems over here, folks. 
I have to clean this thing off to get a good idea of what needs to be done where I'm at with the bottom here. Probably not gonna happen today, but at least it's out, finally. I've been waiting for this for 10 months. I've been waiting to get this done. And there's a whole big involved story about why it took so long. Let's see if I were to try to do any more sanding or cutting or anything on this boat while I was still in the water, the EPA would come by and find me $5,000 or so. Because all that dust and stuff go into the water and you can't have that. Not like it's gonna hurt the trashiest lake in America any worse than it already is, but you still don't want that. See that? That's not good. That's gonna need a patch, a little patch. That's not supposed to be that way. Why is there electrical tape on this? And that is fishing line. That's not what you wanna see. Not at all. That's not supposed to do that. I'm actually shocked that the uh, anodes are good on this thing still. They're all doing pretty well. Even the ones on the uh, trim tabs here. Not bad. Must not be a whole lot of this. Some on the shaft still. They're not bad. They're not bad at all. That's impressive. It's been a long time since this thing came out of the water. I'm noticing at the top of this rudder here. Looks like looks like somebody already put a patch in there. Uh, but it doesn't look quite right to me. So I guess we're going to have to address that. But as much as I can see of the hull, which is not much, I'm actually uh, encouraged. It doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of immediate issues. But once we get all this scum off of here, we'll have a better idea of what we're actually dealing with. That's not good. That looks like it got smacked right there. That's going to need a patch. It's just filthy. It's filthy all over again. Going to need a pressure wash. Going to need to find a new one of these, or two, or probably four of these. Yeah, it looks like something's been living in there. I don't know. That's going to need a little bit of a patch around there. Strange. I'm actually very excited. Very excited. I can finally get back to it, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get this show back on the road. That's a pretty cool looking boat. <laughs> look at the lines on that, huh? We're gonna make it look a little less goofy, a little more modern all around. It's gonna be a badass adventure machine.